Hello, hello everyone. How are we doing today? Welcome to this Today Our Saturday stream, where we are going to be talking about some wonderful world builders and world building that I got to read as a community sponsor. I don't know, stream wouldn't work on my phone. Time to see if Twitch and Minecraft works on my dinky laptop. Oh no. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome in everyone. How are we doing today? Have, how have our reading challenges been going? Mine is admittedly not complete at this point in time. <laughs> Hi, Judas. How are you doing? Everyone, welcome. Yeah, I'm still working on my reading challenge, and so that is something I'm going to need to put together pretty soon. I mean, it's almost done. It's like almost, almost done. I just need to work on the, um, I need to work on like the goals section. I need to work out what my goals are. I need to write all that stuff down. That's just going to be how it goes. But yeah, things are pretty good. Things are pretty good overall. I'll take my sips before I really get into saying stuff. So yeah, just a little little update for everyone who's here. Oh no. Ooh. I'll turn down my music a little bit. How's that? Is that is that better? I guess I guess maybe I did have it turned up a little bit. Yeah, much better. Okay, good. Okay, good. My apologies. My apologies. Cool. So yes, we will we will continue what we were saying. You're a quiet speaker like me. I'm also like not super close to my microphone, so I have to really like I have to project my voice in order to be heard. Oh, and the sippies are coming in. Thank you very much. Yeah, very cool. So yeah, little updates for anyone who hasn't been around here in a little while, anyone who wasn't here yesterday. I'm very excited to announce I'm part of a stream team now, which is really exciting. I'm going to be part of a awesome group of collaborators and streamers who just do all kinds of shenanigans on the internet. And so that's going to be a fun little thing to explore. You may see more people on this channel going forward. You may see me on other channels more going forward. And so overall, that's just a really exciting and fun thing that I'm excited to share with everyone here. So yeah, if you want to keep an eye out for collaborations and things that are not going to be on my channel, you are more than welcome to come join my Discord server, where I'll definitely be posting about all of that and about my fellow creature feature companions. And yeah, so that's a lot of fun. What else? What else? What else? And if you haven't noticed the where is it above right, right here, we are running an Extra Life fundraiser starting this weekend, probably going on into infinity. But our goal for this weekend is $100, and we're like almost there already. I'm not going to talk about the fundraiser too much today, because the whole idea of Extra Life is that it is focused on gaming. So you are playing to support children's hospitals all throughout the country, I think US and Canada. Very fun. So I'm going to mention it now, because you are able to donate anytime, whether I'm live, whether I'm not live, doesn't matter. But tomorrow, we are going to be doing another gaming stream. We're going to be continuing our Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough, and we are going to continue raising money for Extra Life. And I would really love to have you all there. That'd be really awesome. Once we hit $100 raised, we are going to be doing a raffle for custom emote. So if you want to give up on that, you're going to have to come in and uh, come and give a little donation. <laughs> so yeah, $5 or more will get you into that raffle. And so yeah. But we will not dwell on that very much, because we are here. We are here for a very particular, a very particular adventure. And that adventure today is talking about our shortlist. Let's see if we can pull it up on the screen real quick. Dun, dun, dun. Where are my buttons? Oh gosh, I, I'm just all over the place, aren't I? Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. I put this article together, like, completed it last night. Kind of, kind of into today as well. Here we go. Summer Camp 2023 sponsors picks. <laughs> so yes, here we go. My personal favorites among the entries for historical figures still venerated today. And so let, let me, um... Let me actually get the this isn't a published article yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go 
do that and then share the link. Sponsors picks the button. All right, she exists. And you all get to be the ones to see it first. So here we go. Here is the link, the linky do to that article. But I will do my little, my little reading, my judging experience. We can see the little emote there to describe how I felt getting my 300 articles to read. <laughs> yes, I was presented a grand total of 300 entries for this prompt. Not the highest of the bunch for certain, looking at you prompt number one, or the lowest, but it was quite the challenge. You world builders did not make it easy for me to pick and choose my favorites. In fact, it was pretty tough having to make so many cuts to get down to my long list. And picking a short list from that was even harder. And picking the winner... Mmm. <laughs> and catch me screaming like the glamorous peafowl as I present my final list to you. And the winner is to be revealed during the ceremony. And so, our illustrious champion, this is a placeholder article. I just, I just swiped my pledge into here for now. But after the ceremony... Wait, a glamorous peafowl reference? Yes, there is a glamorous peafowl re reference. Because that is how I felt the entire time I was judging. Just, ah! It was my favorite thing about the, um... My favorite thing about the tooltip here also is that the, um... The letters fly off of the edge of it. <laughs> and that just makes it better, in my opinion. But yeah, after the award ceremony, the actual winner for the prompt is going to be replacing this little placeholder here. And so, do we want to start from the short list or do we want to go from the long list up? They're not in like, the entries themselves are not in any particular order. I just have a section for the short list and the long list. Go with the long list first. All right, let's see if I can drag this down fast enough that no one actually sees. Bam, all right, we're at the bottom of the article. All right. So the, the long list isn't formatted in any like super fancy way. Oh, just accidental reveal. <laughs> um, yes, so for our long list, we have Kodic by Satrium. This is a fun article. We did get to read this on stream. And this is about our one of the smartest tinkerers of his time. And we did discuss how it was really cool that we had a list of all the different discoveries and things and a couple a couple links here and there we can pursue more information about some of these very fun very cool oh and before i forget of course we need to share a link but of course and the controversy not every great figure can be without controversy but of course am i right so this is a cool, this is a cool historical figure. I like the little icons, the portraits, they're fun. And so this was an article I did enjoy. And that's true for all of them. <laughs> and there are so many not even on my list that I'm like, ooh, I, I could talk about this article or maybe I should share this article too. Oh, so good. Let's see, we also have Gilan Morovo by bonus action. Oh, and my, um, my browser window is a little bit too small so that the, uh, the sidebar here is a little overlappy. Ah. Uh. <laughs> and yes, this, um, this is the character from Bonus Action that created the Kite Cipher, which is another article for Summer Camp that was made that I thought was super interesting and super cool. And so I felt really drawn to this character article about someone who created an entire, like, form of communication. That is the silent form of communication, of course. And Calixtus, hi, how are you? Welcome, welcome in. We are going through our long list right now. And so I hope you I hope you are excited to see what awesome and cool people we have on this list. And yeah. Once again, this is one of those this is one of those simple articles that like it just had a really cool premise and I really like I really like the ideas behind it. Let's see, who is, who's next on our list? Nicole, Celestial of Compassion by Liliana Casper. Also on my long list. It's just gonna be like rapid fire me sharing links to the chat right now. I, I hope y'all don't mind. 
Here you go. Here's the next entry on our long list. I I thought that this one was a really uh, was a really excellent article. Like it's um it's about like a celestial being, of course, but one known for being a figure of kindness, generosity, and care. Just like very positive things, having a positive impact on the world, and that gave me like a couple little warm fuzzies reading about someone who's like known and revered for being like that in your world. And all the different appearances and renderings, the way that she is seen throughout the world and the holidays that celebrate her. She's honored on Thursdays. Little fun facts. It's just, it's fun to see like the little details, like when, when is a person venerated? Not just why or just that they are. You know, do they have special holidays dedicated to them? Do they have historical records that talk about them, that are shared with, with the people all the time? There's just so, so many factors to consider with characters. Let's see, we also have The Dark Lord Malkane by Amelie. So Amelie's articles are always some of my favorites. Just because of the way that they're laid out, I think it's I think it's so fun with the containers and the icons and everything is just presented in such a nice, neat, and lovely to read way. Like it's it's just a pleasant viewing experience, you know. And what happened in a stale? And I also I really I really like the sheep icon. <laughs> it's just it's so cute. It makes me happy. And the evil, evil icon. Absolutely. And so we have each of these little sections. These nice and neat and packaged up information in nice little bite-sized pieces. Because I, I do really, I do really appreciate an article that doesn't make me have to, kind of like fight to pull information out of it. I love I love an article that kind of just like it has it's sectioned out. It tells you what information you need and like where to find it without, you know, without making it a scavenger hunt. So, hmm. You can make a scavenger hunt and you can make it fun. And I have seen it before. Oh, I still have my Baldur's Gate bot uh turned on. You can just ignore that. We're not playing Baldur's Gate today. <laughs> In fact, I think I might go change that right now because I don't want that playing for like my entire stream today. Bum, 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 bum. Let's see. Give my timers. It's a little. Bum, bum, bum. Remove that. Put the summer camp one back on. There you go. Very good. Very, very good. <laughs> anyway, we continue on with our list. And who is next? We have Bemos God of Land and Nature by Dakota6450. This is a this is definitely a name that I don't think I've heard before. But this is a really cool article. Um, I think what really drew me to this article in particular is like this entire giant list. Not a giant list, there's like four or five entries. Um, this list of holy books and codes. I don't know, I get I get really hyped again about like the small details like there are entire books here about this god and the holy codes oh, hold on my twitch is just like not functioning right now <laughs> let's go here there we go there's the link for you guys and yes yeah, so we have holy books and codes leaves of harmony foundational text about fundamental principles of the verdant path songs of the seasons Celebrating the cyclical nature of the earth and its changing seasons, offering hymns and poems and rituals. Like there's there are these different texts with different purposes. I really I love looking at this kind of stuff. It's fun. Also, this dude's 17 feet tall. That's pretty cool. <laughs> we have the divine symbols and sigils. Moonlight Bard! Hi, hi, hi. Hello, welcome. How are you? Welcome in. We're going through our long list. All our, all our favorites from this prompt. We're going through them pretty quickly, but if one catches your eye and you do want to read more of it, I will, I will gladly sit down and just kind of take a crack at some information here. 
And next on our long list is Kester Fidos by ECC Books. Very cool, very cool. Let me just uh, bring that back in a little bit. Yes, Kester Fidos, very cool. I I really liked this article for... Like, we, we did read this article on stream, I think, last week or the week before. And this is a really good article about, like... Like, the strength, the strength of someone who is trying to protect their family, their offspring. She, she made sure that her daughter did not have to serve. And she, in fact, gave her life in that uh, endeavor. Chris is always a fave. Yes, Chris, Chris makes some awesome stuff. Chris has, like, this fantastic mix of, like, super, like, super serious content, but also... We have a lot of the really silly content, like the puns, <laughs> all the puns everywhere. And like the feral lawyers. <laughs> Tarion calling, hello, how are you? Welcome in. Katoi Poi, how are you doing today? So there we go. Castor Fidos, very cool. I would like to do like small, um, small write-ups for each of these at some point. I just, uh, maybe, I don't know. It might happen, uh, it might happen during the reading challenge, or, you know, like while I'm finishing up mine, because my reading challenge isn't actually done yet. <laughs> we need to, we'll need to take a crack at that as soon as we can. And next entry on our long list, Hoth Palval Craft in the First by Craybook. This is another article that we did read on stream. It was very cool. Um, this is one of those really long articles, but I did find it very interesting that they actually made like an AI chatbot of this character that you can talk to this character and get more lore about the world. And I think that is a really cool and really interesting way to use like AI technology and generation. Sorry, there's like people walking around outside. <laughs> and yeah, there's, there's just like so much information in this article and it's really cool and it really outlines the history of this character, what they're known for, why they were so important in this world. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. And I keep, every time I see this picture, I'm like, Mind Flare? <laughs> Could be pretty cool. Oh, and with some with some good timing, we do have Saisia Songvi by Tarion Calling up here in the long list. So another article that we read on stream. And so this is, this is the figurehead of a revolt. This is, this is a badass character who knew what she was going for, and she went out swinging. She went out swinging, and that is how she is remembered, and I just think that is dope. I love that in a character. Who else do we have? We have Burgermeister by Emily Armstrong. Oh, hold on. I, I have been a fool. A fool, a little creature. I've not been sharing these links, so here is the link for Kester Fidos by ECC Books. Definitely go check out Chris and his work. Go check out everyone on this list, frankly. Here we go. Craybook's article as well. Hey, I'm just glad to have others enjoy her badassery. Yes, 100%. Here's the article we were just discussing. By Terry and Colleen. And here we go. Now to the current one on the list that we are looking at. We've got The Burgermeister by Emily Armstrong. Culinary Punk is a world that I, like obviously I'm aware of Culinary Punk. <laughs> um, I just haven't sat down to read much of it yet. And so I was very interested by this article, just kind of going into it. This is, it's so, it's fun. I love, I love the art, first of all, that Emily has in these articles, just all throughout the world. Yes, this really awesome character that goes into like rumored affiliations and connections with other groups. Like the Enigmatic Griddle Syndicate. <laughs> Some believe that his culinary prowess and daring exploits made him an ideal candidate for association with this clandestine organization. Because like, I, I just love the way that Emily writes and like the truth remains shrouded in the sizzling secrets of his legacy. Like, 
How how did Emily get so good at like writing food things? <laughs> yeah, culinary punk is like it's awesome. It's really cool. And, like create a remarkable cookbook. It's like all this hidden knowledge. It's oh my gosh. Like there's just so much so much fun. So much fun in these articles and I need to read more culinary punk. Like that's all I got from this article. It's like I just need to read more. I need to know more, I need to absorb more, I need to see more of this content. And by sharing this link with you all, I implore you to do the same. Yes, the occupation of a legendary cowboy chef. Love it. How can you not love that? <laughs> Let's see. The last entry of our long list is Hippocritia by Prippy Monty Poppycock. Another one that we did read on stream. Very cool. Playing with the perceptions of the people who think that this is a holy person, a paragon of truth, only to be shown that it's all built on lies. And it's very curious to me how even though this article shapes up to say, like, she's actually kind of reviled all throughout, not really venerated, there are still people out there who do venerate her for her cunning, for being some, <laughs> for being this like, oh gosh, what's the word? This deceptive character. You're like, yeah, we, we kind of like that about her. That's what we want to be. No, I'm too late. You're not too late. No, no. But <laughs> we have, we have gotten through our long list. Refresh yourselves. We thank you for the sippy. Oh. So, we've just Refresh gone through yourselves. our long list. Oh my gosh, you guys, with the sippies. Oh, many thanks. <laughs> so yeah, you haven't really, you haven't really missed a lot. You've only missed half of the articles on the list. <laughs> We were going through them pretty quickly. Um, is there a link I can check out? Absolutely, there's a link you can check out. But we are we are working our way up this list. We've started with our long list, and then we're going up through the short list right now. We're actually going to start with our first entry on the short list. Not in any particular order. It's just going to be me scrolling up and revealing them as I go. But if you want to have the link handy, you are welcome. I have made an article for this long and short list. Uh, stop hovering over things. But alright. First entry to our shortlist. Tappy taps. We have Anais Mundro by Jarhead. So. This is one of those articles that I just think like has a really it's a really cool layout. There's like there's a ton of information, there's a ton of images kind of like breaking everything up talks about the history of this character, talks about who they were, who they're connected to, talks about what organizations they're kind of like affiliated with, what impact they had. And it's just, just look at all this work. Very cool. And it's got all the quotes just kind of sprinkled throughout. You know, I'm a sucker for a good quote, <laughs> like for quotes, for narrative snippets, for things like that. And there's just, there's a whole lot in here, and of course, we end with the drama. She didn't just pass away. She died not of age, but of poison! <laughs> and so this is one of those outspoken political figures who, even on her deathbed, was like decrying all of the, all the crooked politicians who were now coming to her deathbed to try to, try to like, you know, make good, if you will try to use their status of like being seen with her as a little bump up to their rank on the political ladder. Meanwhile, this is all happening and she's like, these people are using me for clout right now. Do you see this? And so eventually it does seem like she was um, assassinated, allegedly. There are many suspects, some saying it could have been the doing of spies for Kamor, even a rival political faction of the Exiles. And so this is a very cool article, and I do recommend that you go check it out. Crazy Eddie, hello, welcome. We love a good lady who doesn't take shit no matter where it comes from, exactly. 
So that was that was one of the really cool articles from my list. And now we're gonna have a triple reveal here. Oh, let me go back up a little bit. All right, our next three articles. Hold on. Um, wait. If I go any lower, you're gonna start seeing like content from other people. So sorry if my overlay is a little. <laughs> sorry if my overlay a little bit is covering things up. It might have made more sense if I go from the <laughs> from the top down, but it's all right. We're already here. And so we have. Oh, any article I know who I'm cheering for then. <laughs> and I see my prophet, yes, Calixis, you are also on this list. So we do have Sanaski by Hanhula. Of course, we gotta have a Hanhula article on the short list. <laughs> I suppose I should wait until the rest are revealed. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole point of me having this article here is like you are more than welcome to go look at this article after or follow along with me during the stream. Wahoo! And there we go. Han Snugger went on my short list. Yeah, I mean, well, listen, with an article like this, we cannot, we cannot deny that Han Hula produces like absolute banger after absolute banger every single year. Summer camp seems to be like where, like this is where she shines. And some of my favorite parts about these articles, like Han Hula's articles in particular with um, deities, is the way that she's kind of set up domains. Like I, I don't know, like these little, these little, these little color, color blocks for the domains and the subdomains. It's just, it's a fun little, it's a fun little pop, you know? But yes, we have an article full of moon dragons. It's a moon dragon deity. One of Istralar's, well, it was once one of Istralar's most major deities and served as patron of the night sky and of exploration to any mortal or draconic life across Istralar's surface. And so this is just, this is just a really cool article about the deity, about what they were, what they did, what, like how important they were to the world. Yeah, Han consistently produces some of the most amazing work on World Anvil. Oh, is the music just a tad too loud? I don't know, Spotify's being weird today. Sometimes, sometimes things are being, sometimes things are a good volume and sometimes they stop. <laughs> but yeah, so let's see. We continue down this little adventure. Now it is good, strange. Yeah, things are, things are just a little questionable, you see. Now we talk about the god, the servitors, the champion. <laughs> my kitty like the music, oh. <laughs> but I don't know, I think one of my favorite parts of this article is this quote right here. Look man, I told you. Fucking moon dragons. <laughs> it's just, again, like, I love, I love a good quote, right? And Hanhula's been like, like with the with the quotes with the notifications all throughout the event, Han's just been like blowing it out of the water, one could say. <laughs> Coughs <laughs> under the sea. Precisely. Oh gosh. And yeah, so this this is just one of those articles full of awesome content, great quotes, lots of Lots of cool stuff and lots of cool imagery as well. So let us move on to our next. We are going to need my own sippies. Yes, of course. While you wait, I will, or while you run off and do that, I will have my own sippy. Oh, wonderful, wonderful day. There we go. We have next on our list, Blati Kuski, the prophet of Blati by our one and only Calixtus. Now this article was also one that I really enjoyed. Um, like another one of those really long articles that go into like all kinds of history, stories about this character, what they did, what they're known for, where they've been seen throughout history, where they're, where they're worshiped, where they're not worshiped. Oh, the problem with Calixa's articles, I already read them and can't hit like twice. <laughs> but 
That is true. That is 100% true. That's how I feel about a lot of these worlds. It's like, I can't... I can't like this twice, and that's a crime. When, who's gonna put up the feature suggestion on World Anvil that says, Hey, let me like the article again. <laughs> let me like it twice. Without unliking it. And yeah, so this is, this is like a, this is a chunky, hefty article, just chock full of information. And all the different stories are really, really cool. I'm gonna stop doing chunky articles. Sometimes I can't. I mean, hey, there's nothing wrong with a chunky article. Nothing wrong with a chunky article. Because you know what? As chunky as it is, you still laid out all the information in a way that makes sense. Like, you know, you have all of your sections where all the information is located about different stages of the life, different parts of the history. And of course, at the very end, we have this artwork. So that's really cool. Calixis art is always really cool. I love looking at it. <laughs> Delian, love a good chunk. Yes, 100%. We love a good chunky article. Oh, and I'm back. Holy shit, I just noticed the donations. <laughs> Things went down after I had to go yesterday. Oh. Well, yeah, the donations are looking pretty good. It's very exciting. We're at 75 out of $100, which is really cool. And sometimes you just need a good thousand words to get everything out of your head. Exactly. Exactly. Sometimes you just need to get all those words just out of there. And sometimes you just can't do that in the in 300 words, you know? Sometimes you just have to keep it rolling, keep it going. <laughs> keep it moving up, you know? Let's see. We shall move on to our next on the list. It's Orwan Ulera by Crazy Eddie. My longest during summer camp was 3,559 words. That's quite a few. Wait, hold on. Did I, did I share the link to this? I don't remember, so I'm just going to share it again. <laughs> but now we will read Crazy Eddie's. And here we go, it's another, this is another great article of lots, just lots of history, lots of, lots of background on the character. And things just aren't loading up as I'm doing this funny little scroll way. And yeah, so this was, like, this was a character history and character story, and there was like a whole narrative component to this that I thought was really awesome. And like it really goes into this character and the relationship that it had with other characters in this story, in this like section of the world. And of course, as with many great characters, we end with tragedy. <laughs> and seeing the impact that this had, this ending had on other characters in the world is also really exciting and really cool. We got magic, we got wizards. I I love all of the like world building snippets and tidbits. I'm sensing a pattern here. Are you sensing a pattern here? <laughs> you know, incantations and rituals are slow as this is part of the river. Like this this world building of like even how the world works, not even just related to this character, is really cool and really exciting to see. Like I want to learn more about your world through these characters. And so not only do I want to know who these characters are, I want to know how they slot into the world around them. And to, to know that, I need to know more about the world around them. So dropping in these little, these little snippets, these little things about the teachings of magic, for example. Like things, things just start to click into place. They start to make sense. And again, with the, with the fun, silly quotes. So, what the hell are you? <laughs> or when looking at a centipede the size of a dragon with two human faces. If I saw something like that myself, I would also say, what the hell are you? <laughs> well, we start with the novel three years after the events of Orwan. Ooh. And yeah, so we talk about his relationship, this character, Illyria. And go, going off with a boom. There we go. People were devastated by this corrupted headmaster. And Orwan saved the day at the cost of his own life. We love, we love a good bit of tragedy. <laughs> I 
And let's see. Shall we? I'm gonna start closing tabs because we have so many open. I'm just gonna just gonna be flipping through all of the everything. <laughs> and let's see who we have next on the list here. We have another three bangers. Here we go. We have from Bali and Skin Peeler by Nino Dunlord. <laughs> Yes, indeed, you are on my list. You cannot escape. <laughs> so this is this is another one of those cool articles. Love a good warrior tale, right? Everyone loves to hear about warriors of the world. And this interesting relationship between this interesting relationship between the elves and orcs of this world. And the way that this character kind of embodies like kind of like an unusual relationship between the two, right? <laughs> Didn't think I'd make the short list. Well, listen, you're gonna make the short list if you're the goat. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Wait, what? That is the short list? Yes, indeed, that is the short list. We started this with the long list. Now we're now we're getting into the short list. So crazy Eddie, that means you too are on my short list. <laughs> Me on your short list? Listen, you guys make some awesome work. So it's time it's time you guys get recognized. Will there be an even shorter list? No. That will break my heart. <laughs> well technically there will be a shorter list because I had to pick three from this to put in my reading challenge. So the shortlist list is just the winner. All right, we got 10 winners. <laughs> Honestly, I wish I could just like award all of you the actual like the win. That'd be really sick. Um, I just don't have it in me to do 10 illustrations. <laughs> the one will have to suffice for now. However, I would still really like to make some like fun little doodles and arts for you guys at some point for everyone on my short list. Um, as I find time, of course. That'd be really fun. But that's something we can talk about another time. Like, I, I just want to do fun and cool things for the people whose writing I like. But yeah. This is, like, I just really like this article. <laughs> there's the art, there's all the, there's like these different forms. Not forms. Different stages of the history, of course. It's nice to know where a character got like their start, middle, and end. And it's cool to hear about the random like adventures, misadventures that they've had throughout their lives that kind of got them to where they are today. And so this kind of this journey the journey from the forest of elves, of course only knowing the comfort of the shared mind of harmony with one's surroundings. To finding the orcs who think that elves are like these holy beings. It's the relationships between like the people of this world and the different types of peoples in this world was really fascinating to me. And so that got us a spot on the short list. And here we go back to the list overall. Stop, I can only get so red. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm here to say nice words to everyone on this list. So you're gonna get the nice words and you're gonna like it. <laughs> Praise is the Nino, exactly. 100 percent Let us get to the next one. We have Leviathan by those two nerds. Those two nerds. Oh, wow, ooh, time to please <laughs> praise other people. Yes, it is time to jump to our next person on the list. There we go, we have this article right here. Uh, those two nerds has been a face that I've really enjoyed like seeing in the Discord, especially lately. Um, has been like active in the chat, has been like chatting, like helping a lot of people. I think that's really cool. And in addition to all of that, They've been producing some pretty awesome work, including this article right here. 
So this is Leviathan. Leviathan is an aged Azarata nearing the end of its life. And so this is like, this was a character who's kind of like a, a creature. Like this is not a person, this is a creature upon which a city was built. So these are creatures on the backs of which cities and like housing was being built and constructed. And I think that is such an interesting concept. Not like, I've definitely seen it before, but I love seeing the ways that people explore these things. Like moving, moving cities on a living foundation. Very cool. And megafauna, yes, exactly. Megafauna are very cool. And I don't know, like using using little sections, like with these with these icons here, like it just it's a little it's a little visual element that just like it tickles me. I really like it. And yes, more and more cities were founded based on Leviathan's example. So like this was not this was not the last. I I believe what happened here was that this was um like this was a trial. The idea of doing this was still kind of being considered, and then they built upon Leviathan. I don't know why, but the simple concept of what if big <laughs> tickles a fun area in my brain. Yes, 100%. It's like, take the creatures, but make them large. Make them big. <laughs> and yeah, this is, a, this is a creature that still lives into the modern day. Oh, and yes, his birthday, however false it may be, is still celebrated throughout the Torm. And he's still gifted with his favorite food every year. And so yeah, this is this is a creature who's kind of like who's grown very old and is kind of on the way out, as it were. Very very sad, but still, it's a very cool, very cool concept. I like, I really like it. All right, we have a couple more articles. I believe it's our final three. Here we go. Is this? Yes, it is. We can just scroll all the way up now. To the judges, shortlist. We have Ivor, founder of the flame by Queen Marie. Here is another really, really interesting. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. I'm, I'm a silly goose. I'm a silly goober. Stormbrill. Old King Cade. Of course. <laughs> Thank you for like actually paying attention to my own screen. We skipped one. My bad. Here's the link, of course. Let's go. All right. And so, Twitch is telling me that an ad is going to start running soon. So if that happens, um, you're more than welcome to tell me, hey, chill out for a minute. <laughs> and I absolutely will. But in the meantime, so I will be cold in the ground before I let Storm's amazing work go unmentioned. Honestly, me too. I cannot believe that I... I think I just like, I got stuck in my head about like, oh, how many articles do we have left? Uh, <laughs> counting and numbers. Silly. Okay, well. Old Kincaid. This is another really excellent article from Stormbro. I know, much like Hula, Stormbro is also out here bringing out the bangers. And this is one of the god husks of Cathedras. And the god husks of Cathedras are just really fucking cool. <laughs> this is like, he's, he's the watcher. He's a silent watcher. Punished for seeing something that he really shouldn't have seen. Or at the very least, with language. We're probably adults in this chat, right? Probably. <laughs> Well, hey, listen, we we had language in Hanhula's article, too. That was, a, that was just straight up in the article, too. I didn't just say it. Oh, oh oof. <laughs> I just moved my cursor. That was silly. Little oof. This is the only acceptable response to this article. <laughs> Honestly, they need to start a premier, premier League eventually where times like Storm and Han can duke it out. True. It's like the people who keep on winning, just like, put them in their own league. So I'm only cleverly disguised as an adult. 100%. Oh, 
And yeah. So it's it's really what really got me about this article is like the premise of this character. Like it it had me feeling like a certain type of way. And then in the article, like it it really goes into how like being in the presence of this character is like deeply discomforting and unsettling and that's like the aura around them like I I feel it in the article <laughs> you know what I mean like what what happened to this character just oof, you know and so knowing not only not only that like you know like as as with all the god husks of Cathedras as you know like they're you know they're dead but knowing how they died and the circumstances of it and now how they continue to affect the world around them and how humans are so silly in that they don't care if this aura of dread washes over them when they enter this guy's space they're gonna look for treasure <laughs> that's that's humans for you but yes stormy of course let's see i I too use this ancient forgotten trick of waiting for my DOB to get further away to trick people into thinking I'm an adult. Yeah, listen, we're we're all pretending here to be functioning, to be functioning proper adults here. We're doing our best, as one does, but it's hard. Okay, it's hard out there. But now we move on to this article by Quinn Marie. In the proper order now. <laughs> Here we go. Ivor, founder of the flame. Another really cool layout with a lot going on. And all of this artwork. And so this this article, you know, I think I think I really had a soft spot for this article because it reminded me in a lot of ways of one of my old um one of my old favorite book series from when I was younger. And it's one that I it's one that I talked about kind of recently. I just read this one a couple days ago. It's such a pretty art style, right? Yeah, and like this book series, Eon, is about like this girl who is in a competition. It's like all about fighting, it's like very male dominated. And um, you know, it starts in this article as like, at a time where fighting women were degraded and mocked, Ivor rose from nowhere, became a dragon companion, and created the flame martial art with him. And so, a girl fighting in a male-dominated space, befriending a dragon, and this blazing a path like that, that reminds me of that book series. And so I was just like, oh, I can't not just sit here and like fawn over this for, you know, a little while. And so it talks about who this character was, where she came from, what actually happened, talking about this trial and what it actually was and what it meant to her. And yeah. And so it's a mystery how this young teen without family backing or money made it there. It was just like, it's, it was a circumstance never shared by the character. So it's, it just remains a mystery. And so it's really cool seeing how everything in here is broken up into these different chunks, these different containers. It's kind of how everything's like stacked together. And so you kind of just like bounce around to look at these different things and they're all, you know, there's that separation of the content. It doesn't all just like meld together. You know what I mean? And so that is one of those things that I do like to see in a layout of an article. And I did think it was quite handy that, um, that there were numbers in the corners of these two, so it's one, two, three, four. Um, I know when people lay out a lot of boxes, sometimes sometimes you kind of just jump around between them in different orders, depending on who you are and how you like to read. So sometimes it helps to just say like, hey, here's the order these should be read in. So yeah, another very cool, very wonderful article. Another off a short list. And so now we have two more articles on the short list. One, two, three, four. Yes, two more articles on the short list. And we have Tyr Baglem by Dillian. Hoo hoo hoo. It's Dillian, yeah! 
And so we share this link with everybody. And so I'm also a huge sucker for like faith. And so what am I doing there? You're making awesome stuff. That's all I can say. <laughs> You're doing the good work. Exactly. See, Eddie knows. Just, you know, being in your rightful place. Exactly. 100%. Damn cool statue. Yeah, there's like, there's... A... So I just think this article is really cool. I really like the premise. And, I don't know, like, the, um... I like a clean layout, alright? Like, everything is just so nicely, neatly packaged. Essentially, like, in a square. <laughs> Is that a person? Well, it looks like someone in like covered up in like rags and such. A person, yes. Yes, indeed, it is a person. So yeah, topics topics of faith in general just kind of like iron grip on me. You know what I mean? Start talking about the great apostate, dividing and reforming. And I I just love that like, like you know that meme that's like you throw up the peace sign and then like fade away. <laughs> well, Katoi Boy, thank you for the resub. Three months. Thank you very much. My world has a lot of faith stuff. Well, that just tells me that I need to read more about your world. 100%. Faith, faith is something that I'm trying to, like, inject a lot more of into Malkora because it, it does play a huge role. I just, again, I just never sat down to write about it, and I'd need to change that. But yeah, the, the meme of, like, you know, throw up the peace sign, you just, like, fade out of existence. That's basically what this character did, apparently. After after decades of proselytizing in the various realms, Tyr Baglam returned to the desert never to be seen again. Just, I love that. I love that about him. We, we love someone who just kind of like shows up, does their thing, and then just heads on out. So I was like, alright, I'm gonna head out now. Goodbye. And yeah, people, people were waiting for him to come back and he just didn't. <laughs> It's, it's just fun how how cryptic some holy people can be. Let's see, we have one final final entry on our list. And that is Gwyneth Duckstore by Myers Cosmo. This was one of those this was another one of those articles. Where we see, like, we, we have a POV, essentially. Someone is talking about this other character. And that is how this article is constructed. So this is, like, this is one of those in-world perspectives. Talking about a character. So not all the information... Not all of the information is being handed to us. There's a lot of, um... There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of questions to be asked. And there's a lot of quotes all throughout from all different kinds of characters. Just like offering, offering ideas and just their thoughts and considerations about this character. And I also just really enjoy, like I really enjoy the layout, like how much, how much writing there is in here. And the artwork that is just like scattered throughout. I'm just gonna have to scroll down until it hits one. See there, it's coming up. Here we go. Woohoo. Uh -huh. And this like artwork like this that's just like sprinkled throughout. Let me get that so it's actually above the overlay. Let's see, please do. Let's see, did I did I post link? Link. Well the human article I read it yesterday. Uh -huh. Yeah, a chunky article I wrote about humans in summer camp is a good introduction to a lot of the world. Yes, I will I will absolutely go check that out. But yeah, it's it's just really cool. I and I think I believe that this artwork is made by Myers Cosmo themselves, which is also really cool. Like this piece right here. Also by Myers Cosmo. You're like, I, I'm just such a sucker for anybody who has their own art in their articles. And that's why I want, that's why I want to make more art of my own world. So I can put art of my own into my articles. That'd be really sick and really awesome. 
Yeah, just this ending to the article. I know, I know in the author's note it says it's still a work in progress and an absolute mess, and it ended very abruptly, but listen, sometimes an article just, um, sometimes an article can just end abruptly and it works, you know? Well, sadly, the only art I'm good at is map art. Well, listen, maps are chef's kiss. We love a good map. And yes, so that, that wraps up the shortlist. And so one, one of these articles is going to be the grand prize winner. But even if you, yeah, they will be the grand prize winner and they will take this slot right here. Honestly, if that was a whip, I can just pack up. Oh, such good work by Myers Cosmo. Yes, 100%. 100%. I actually got to meet Myers Cosmo at the New York City meetup, which was really cool. I'm cheering for all you beautiful beings. Yes, like I, oh my gosh, I cannot stress enough how absolutely heartbreaking it was for me to have to, like, cut so many people from the list. You know what I mean? Like, there were 300 articles on my list. And I had to cut that number down to, like, 20 articles to feature and talk about. Whew. It was... it was an adventure. It was... it was a struggle. And, like, I cut it down to 20. I was like, okay, short list. Oh, I mean, long list. Okay, cool. How do I pick a short list from this? <laughs> how do I pick a short list? And then I made my short list. I'm like, how do I pick a winner from this? How do I cut this down even more? impossible <laughs> and so there are a lot of articles that aren't on my list at all that i'm like oh but these articles are also so good i want to shout them out too and like i could just make a list of every single article but i also need to understand like time is finite and i am already like struggling to keep my grip on the amount that i have but i want everyone to know like anyone who submitted any article I mean, just in summer camp in general. You're all fantastic. Like, I, I have... I have read every single article in my list. So, like, I know. I know. <laughs> and so, just just having to pick a couple of them... It, it was difficult. It was, it was a struggle. But we did it! But we did it. Just, like, through gritted teeth and screaming. We cut that number down. Oh gosh, and okay, so for anyone who would like to see the full list for themselves to have it, I will share the link once again. Here we go, Summer Camp 2023 sponsors picks. And at the bottom of the article, I've also said, hello, this is the article that I made for my own prompt. If you would like to go check that out, you are more than welcome to. It is the image that is at the top of the article. And that's Cora the Dawnbringer. There she is. Another simple article. Talking about talking about faith in my world. Talking about one of the gods. One of the goddesses. One of the most revered goddesses, actually. And she is one of the ascended. A mortal who was brought up to godhood. Cora is, pre is so pretty, yes. I agree. It's, um, it's just mid-journey art, so I kind of- I didn't really have full control over it, but, you know, I had- I had some creative direction at the very least. But I would love, at some point... I- I think my main goal is going to be to kind of construct this pantheon in particular in my world, give it some custom artwork, and just have that be, like, the foundation that I start with. The thing that I start branching more articles out of, like more polished articles out of. And so that is something that we can address in our reading challenge once we actually get down to the actual goals section. And so that's gonna be really great. <laughs> All right, beautiful. And so yes, thank you, literally everyone who submitted these articles. I loved reading them. I love reading them. I love being a sponsor. I love getting to see all of the wonderful works. The works in progress, the completed works, the everything in between. Just, you're beautiful. And now, now this begs the question, what will we do for the next hour? 
<laughs> for the next hour or so. We could do, we could work on our reading challenges. We could read some articles if you'd like. Because I, I do still need to finish my reading challenge, of course. And so we could, we could do that today. We could do that another day. If someone has an article that they would like to be read, I'm not opposed. I don't know. There's so many, so many good favorites. Work on your reading challenge? I suppose I should. I suppose I should work on my reading challenge. Um, I mean, we are on the topic of my goals. So why not start, uh, why not start talking about my goals? So let me just get my tab in here. Already open with the reading challenge. We're gonna close all these articles. I'm gonna give you guys like a little flashbang of uh, tab hopping. <laughs> all right. So for the reading challenge, we already had the tab open, editing it, of course. Making spam musubi from cooking and listening. Oh, that sounds so yummy. I need that in my life right now. <laughs> I need food. I mean, I had some... I had like Korean scallion pancakes for breakfast today. With a bit of like the Kewpie mayo and some sauce and just... Oh, it was really good. It was really good. They're not like... they weren't homemade, so they could be better. But the frozen ones are also still good. <laughs> Uh, give us a category you want to read over and we can drop articles. We'll see. Okay. So I do I do have articles picked out for my reading challenge um, for just the categories. Um, but I have like a couple extra sections that I wanted to add before I like publish it for the world to see. And so I can start... I can start showing off a little bit of what my reading challenge currently looks like. Um, Camp Feral Badge is going to be placeholder for the actual reading challenge badge. Um, and the way that I picked my... Of, of course I picked my, like my first one as like the venerated character since I already read a lot of these articles. Um, the other two prompts that I chose were based off of two articles that like really like stuck with me throughout the entirety of summer camp. Um, so like these were articles that I read during summer camp while the writing was happening. I was like wow that's that's a really cool article. Or like it just filled me with joy. Um, and so my two picks were Powerful Organization in Your World. Uh, placeholder is a strange way of pronouncing essential cornerstone of the article line. <laughs> Listen, okay. That may be true. But no, okay, so I chose a Powerful Organization in Your World because I was very inspired by this article by Carillion, um, OmniFaith Inc. And so I will I will share with you this article here. My powerful org is a bunch of a-holes. That seems to be how it just kind of happens, right? So here we go. This this article from Megacorpolis. Like I, I wrote about it a little bit already. It's like this article by Carillion was one of the first articles of summer camp this year that I got to sit down and read. And it was one that took me through all stages of grief, horror, uh, grief humor, dread, and amusement. It's excellent writing and a strong capture of the dystopian nature of turning faith into a paid commodity. And so, like, that is that is one of the articles that I read kind of, like, at the beginning of summer camp. Really, really stuck with me. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to choose... I'm going to choose this prompt to do for my reading challenge. And so I, I just kind of, like, went through the list last night and picked a couple... Picked, like, a couple articles that, like, stood out to me for various reasons. Some were like a bit random clicks, some were, I don't know. But I do have in here, oh, I opened that in a new window, not in a new tab. <laughs> I did grab the Alliance of Nations from Ni. So I think this logo is really cool. And what really got me is this, um, it's like these bubbles here for the different seats on the Alliance Council. I just thought that was really cool. And so just featuring one of those like fun fun CSS little adventures. 
Oh, if we click on these, do we get anything? No, it's just, it's a fun visual. I think it's really cool. And like, it pops up. I love those bubbles. Yes. Yeah, the little CSS things that she adds to her articles. Yeah, 100%. Like, it's, it's so fun. Like, you can just sit here and hover over these little things. And you get to see, like, it's like, oh, it's majority here and all this. And Nia's also really good with, like, the sections and little boxes and bubbles and just kind of neatly framing all the information in an article. Let's see. Um, also on my reading list is another article from Those Two Nerds, Mother of the Stars. There's another really cool article. I kind of, um, I kind of went with the, the strategy of, like, picking names I thought were cool. And I believe this one is, it's got five likes. I was, I was looking for like a couple articles that like, maybe not a ton of people had seen. So I think that was particularly, I think that was true of Light's Talon. I thought this one was really cool. So light guide me to where the world no longer burns, where love never suffers, where the battle ends. Guide me light, for I will lie down and know my work is done. And yeah, so it's another one of those cool articles. Little unfound gem. <laughs> I'll just share that link with everybody. Um, I kind of feel bad because my organization article is the first one I wrote pretty much like ever for summer camp, and then my third article altogether on World Animal for Money. I was kind of harsh and rushed. I was really looking forward to going back and editing it. Yes, I, I have a lot of articles that I look forward to going back and editing later on. I will share I will share this link as well. I'm just gonna share the three the three articles that I picked for this. Here you go. And so those are my three picks for organization on the reading challenge. And so for my second prompt that I picked. I picked a species known for its mischievous personality, and that is because the um, Stormbrill's Tinkets like captured my heart and soul. <laughs> like beyond beyond any creature that I've ever read about, my heart and soul I give to these creatures. Tinkets, nature's ultimate criminal. <laughs> I I don't know. Like this article just brought me so much joy. And, like, look at this little creature. This little guy. I've definitely talked about this article on my stream, like, six times. Um, but that just tells you that it's, like, it's really stuck with me. Let's see. When I think about mischievous creatures, I can only imagine scrungly little grabby hands. And Stormbrill's tinkets embody all the grabby-handed mischief one could ever want in a creature. The sketches have my heart. I would forfeit all mortal possessions to a Tinket if it only asked for them. And yes, look at look at this little scrungly little creature. Like this is exactly what I mean. This is exactly what I refer to when I say like this little scrungly little grabby hands. And this one's this one's scared. This one got startled. And here's this one doing a little grab. <laughs> He's just grabbing the little thingy. Well, let's be honest though, the Tinket wouldn't bother asking, that's true. You're absolutely right. So I would just I would just have to look into its eyes and know that it wants all of my mortal possessions. So good. So there you go, here's here's a link to that absolute delight of an article and there's like a habitat map which is really cool so they're they're invasive worldwide but they are native to Rusin very cool and so I I tried to find a couple a couple excellent picks from the mischievous creatures and so I found candle lights from TC, and these are these are really cool. They're like um, I I guess I would liken them to like will wisps. You know what I mean? 
Um, so they're like these little living flames. Little lights moving with a will of their own. And I think that's I think that's really fun. A lot of a lot of TC's articles are really interesting to me. I think they're really fun. And so there is pick number one for the reading challenge. I I found this article just tucked away. The Goblins and Trolls by John Taro. This had like I don't know, did this have any... This had like two likes. But look at all of the images that are just in this article that are so nice. Yeah, the Vivo pages are fun, yeah. But yeah, look at these little guys. They're so cute. And I, I do believe... Is that their art? I do believe that this is their art. Um, this is, this is one of those scenarios where like... It's not, um, it's not distinctly credited, but it does say in the author's notes, I would have preferred to have made more art for this one. So I'm going out on a limb and saying that they did make all of this. And like the style is pretty consistent, so it would make sense. It's like, look at these little guys. So yeah, they're really, they're really cute. And I just kind of stumbled upon this article from the list. Want link? Yeah, I'm, abso I'm absolutely gonna link this. Linky! I didn't forget, I just didn't get there yet. <laughs> but yeah, they're like, they're super cute. And this person's only a master. Oh, it's um... Yeah, interest drawing and writing, but I think that might have been obvious by now. Big story guy, huge story guy even. Storytelling is easily one of my biggest passions. So yeah, I don't know. It's also a portfolio of my favorite works. Okay, so they have a, yeah, so they have a website. Yeah, okay, yeah, so look at this, look at this art that they make. This is fun. Little autumn stroll. And the music hits different, heck yes. Um, can I... I also just noticed that this is like not... Well, I'm trying to arrange my window so that I can actually show you guys the full image here. Because I'm a silly little goose and my, uh, my window is actually much larger than my actual stream frame. Oh yeah, look at this. Isn't this so cute? Yeah, it's a great looking world with a ton of personality. 100%. Like this is this is precisely the reason why I want to like find an art style for my world. Cause like I, I just wanna I wanna be able to make doodles, okay? I wanna make doodles and I want them to look like they belong in my world. And so I would like to find a like a polished art style that's like specific to my world and so that I can just like doodle stuff for it in like a similar style without having to go all the way through with the process. But yeah, I just kind of, I just kind of stumbled on this. And I think that is the beauty of the reading challenge. I would have never otherwise, like I might not have otherwise found these articles if I wasn't just like doodle looking through the list finding read articles to read. So yeah, absolutely. I don't know, give a little give a little shout out here. That's uh, that's their website. That's my concept from a video game or just being a video game so adorable. Yeah, 100 percent Yeah, so this this is probably going to be someone that I like go follow on other places. And I found their work because I found their article by happenstance by doing the reading challenge. So it's uh it's some wonderful stuff. Let's see, where, where was I? Yes, and so the final, the final one of our reading challenge, challenge, is Hanhula's Vivo Pages. And so these are living books. And I actually, I picked this article for my reading challenge because um, it got name dropped in uh, like in my chapter, my chapter's like discussion channel at one point. Um, 
because I don't I don't exactly remember what the conversation was about, but someone brought up like oh like um like Han Hula's uh, living like vivo pages or whatever, and like it was just referenced because it made sense for the conversation. I'm like huh, I should probably go read about this. And I thought at the time that this was like an existing article from before summer camp, but no, it is a summer camp article. <laughs> or maybe the concept existed before and the article didn't until summer camp. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I do have to admit, I looked at her work and decided, yes, I want to have image containers just like hers and went for it. Yeah, the little, the little zoomy ones or like, uh, or the entire container. Either way. They do look really nice. And lifespan, potentially immortal. Did I, did I share the link? I do recall that. I cannot for the life of me remember the context either. Yeah, this it was probably about like our big library discussion. I don't know, things, things are just happening all over the place. There you go. There's a link to that. So I just think it's really cool. Let pages refer to, in literal usage, one side of a leaf of paper. When referring to a vivo page, however, they refer to the whole leaf. And yeah, so this is fun. It's like, did you know that we can respond to things? We're sending it so everything you write on a vivo page we can erase. And then we can use that same ink to write back to you. If we don't want it, we'll just spit it out. Probably onto you. Or your shoes. Who knows? Maybe a vivo page wrote this article. Wouldn't that be fun? So these are... Like, they got the mischief, they're in there. And so yeah, these are these are my little my little selections. And so going down to my reading challenge, of course I have the historical figures still venerated today, and why I link to my sponsors picks for like the full list of all the things I'm interested in. I've discovered that I'm out of Nori, I have to go get some things for stream. Well, thanks for stopping by. Good luck on your Nori quest. I'm very sorry that you're out. But yes, yeah, so here we go. Happy shopping, Kitoifo, yes. And so here I say, as the, as the community sponsor for this particular prompt, I read 300 articles about the venerated historical figures. If you'd like to see a list of 20 of these excellent articles, go check out my Summer Camp 2023 sponsor's picks. Because my heart can't take the prospect of making any more cuts, I allow the D10 of truth to decide which three articles I will feature in this article uh, for the purpose of the reading challenge. But you'll be missing out on some real gems if you don't browse the full list. Wait, I'm on your reading challenge as well? <laughs> what did I do to you? <laughs> well, listen. You were chosen by the D10 of truth. The dice have spoken. And so in the actual proper reading challenge article, we have Calixtus, we have Delian, and we have Crazy Eddie. Praise be the D10 of truth. Praise be the dice. For they tell us how things work. Oh, the dice were cast and they spoke. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like I said, like I, my heart can't take the prospect of making any more cuts, so I left it up to Chance, who would be featured in the actual reading challenge. But yes, I say my reading challenge is incomplete because I have not gone and like left my nice comments on the articles yet, and so I cannot in good faith publish this and say, oh yes, my reading challenge is complete. No, no, I haven't finished it. I haven't given the proper attention and reads that this challenge requires. And I know no one's going to, you know, go and check, but the whole point is that I want to be nice to everybody. And yeah, so this, this section is also empty. The goals and my thoughts. I just kind of have this little sidebar here. I got my summer camp hub. This article is also not complete in any, in any way, shape, or form. My favorite entry from the, yeah, from the challenge this year. And my pledge article. So that's just kind of filler, because we're going to put our goals and thoughts into this little section here. I threw a ton of extra article links in my reading challenge. Couldn't just show nine. Yeah, I mean, oh, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Technically twelve. <laughs> this just goes straight to my links here. Well, this is all vignette. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 20 more love articles and one extra love for Han Hula's farewell because it cracked me like a raw egg. Oh no. Uh. Yeah, the song, the song that's playing right now is like, I love the song. I should just do all of my streams with divinity music. <laughs> 
It's not gonna be in the VOD anyway, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, and then I just have a little section dedicated to Feral Friday. Because, you know, if you need more reading material, you are more than welcome to go browse these lists. Just in these four articles, there are 60 plus articles that you can go read from all throughout summer camp. So we have, we have them all sectioned off, of course, by theme. Feral. Yes, the Feral Fridays. Yeah, I can, I can move the placeholder Camp Feral badge to the Feral Fridays section. But yeah, so that's basically the, um, that's the layout and construction of my reading challenge for this year. It's very, it's kind of similar to my reading challenge last year. My reading challenge last year, I went like beyond ham. I posted like a billion articles for each category. Um, and ooh, doo, 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 doo. articles for each, each category. I had like three for my major picks and like six or more of just like, I also really like these articles and I wanted to feature them. So please enjoy. I don't know, I guess I can just go open it and look at it. Where is it? I, I literally had it open just recently. Bam. Summer Camp 2022 reading challenge. I basically had a little, little jumping along. Cause I think um I think there were like themes, is that what's going on? Cause like a prompt I struggled with writing. Oh no, I think that's just how I picked them. So I picked like a prompt I struggled with. And this was a vehicle used for long journeys. Which like we had a very similar prompt this year, right? And so I picked most helpful for me, fascinating and delightful, and thinking out of the box. So So most helpful for me was like, this article, like this article helped me like put a little more context to the process of writing in the way that I wanted to approach this article. So seeing someone else do something very similar to what I wanted to do and like I found that very inspiring. That's what I picked for most helpful. And vehicles are always tricky. I always, I tend to end up with boats. There are only so many boats a world can have. It's very true. And then fascinating and delightful. It was just um like a concept that I thought like really tickled me. Like I thought it was really cool. Something that really delighted me. And then thinking outside the box. This is for the people who are like twisting the prompts and like making them into something completely, not completely different, but like not thinking in like the normal way. So this one was like mortal possession. Humans as a vehicle for the gods. You know what I mean? So I thought that was really cool. And then... And then down underneath, I had more favorites. And so this is just like a couple extra articles that I thought were really cool. Because I couldn't just pick a couple. And like a food that marks a rite of passage for a culture. It's a prompt I struggle with generating ideas for. And so again, most helpful, fascinating and delightful, out of the box. And so yeah, food that marks a rite of passage for a culture. Time pool made an entire edible city absolutely otherworldly out of the box and it's like it's a dream that heralds like a great change in one's life impending um but they can choose to stay there forever and like push away their fate essentially and i thought that was really cool and we have another another six and then a subject i struggle with a technology lost forgotten and shrouded in mystery most helpful for me was glass smithing that year because I had made basically an entire region that was all about like glass craft. Um, that's Bolkan. It's like they're all about the glass. Like their glass crafters are basically higher ranking than nobles, basically, in the way that their city sees them. Pretty fun. Fascinating and delightful. Ghosting and out of the box, the ley lines. Ley lines is a technology. And this was, this was a Hanula article. But yeah, so goals and such. And so there you go, there's a little Udan on tour. I thought that guy was really cute. <laughs> and so yeah, the my layout's like kind of similar to last year. If you want to go read 
more articles from last year to see what all these wonderful people were up to. You're more than welcome to go check out the reading challenge. You can see some of the articles that I made last year as well, depending on what's Refresh still just kind of hanging out. Oh, I thank you for the sippy. I have been talking for a little while, haven't I? Refresh yourselves. <laughs> uh, we're doing the sippy chain, all right. The slurp sounds feel very pronounced at the moment. Oh, goodness. I think my microphone is just like picking up everything I do. Well, yeah. So that's what I had last year. Now we're doing it so just a little tiny little bit differently this year. That's okay. We can make sure you're actually drinking. There you go. 100%. Refresh oh, yourselves. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You guys. Sippies? Yes, indeed, sippies. <laughs> so yeah, my goal for this article now is to... I gotta go leave my nice my nice little comments for everybody. And we're, Refresh doing, yourselves. we're doing this again. Oh. I gotta go leave my nice little comments for everybody. I might, I might do like a couple more like little snippets of writing for each article. Uh, just to say, like, you know, here are some of my favorite things. Here's why I picked them. Why I think they're really cool. And then, um, and then I gotta put my goals in here. That'll be a lot of fun. I'm gonna feel very awkward trying to do, like, <laughs> the comments and such on stream. Um, but I can start working on my goals and my thoughts. Let me, let me see what we got here. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh man, I am sleepy. Um, I I went to bed at like 4 a.m. I guess technically this morning is what I would call it, and not last night. I I don't know why I I choose to do this. I just I make mistakes. I stay up far too late. My question: What is it? Is oh shit! Look at the time. I didn't make dinner yet. Oh no! You better go make dinner. You're just sticking around for all the excellent articles I'm showing everybody. I messaged you at 3 a.m. for you. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay. I'm wishing you good progress with the goals. Why, thank you. It is much appreciated. Listen, Mochi, I, I cannot be stopped. If I'm already awake at 3 a.m., it doesn't matter if I go to bed at 4. I, I've, already, I've already made my bed. I'm just not laying in it. <laughs> farewell, farewell, Nino. Is my lurk command not working? Streamlabs, please. Uh, I think, um... I think Twitch in general is just like being really weird today. Weird and finicky. Because I, I noticed earlier when I started the stream... When I started the stream, like, my chat in the browser was not working, like, period. Um, my chat wasn't working, my, like, panels weren't working. Like, it just wasn't loading. And now it seems okay. But I guess Streamlabs is still having some issues. I should probably, I should probably migrate my lurk command to moobot, because that's what I'm using for my... for a lot of the other ones now. Yeah, Twitch was acting funny earlier. Yeah, 100% was. So yeah, like, I, I loaded in, um, someone said hi to me in chat, and I typed into, like, my browser in Twitch, like, hello, hi, um, and it just didn't show up, it didn't go through, and I'm like, okay, interesting. Um, but then I sent a message through Streamlabs, and it's like, yep, that worked, that popped up. I'm like, okay, well, why is it like that? Why is it doing that? Um, he who... So yes, okay. Thank you, Mubot, for posting about our Extra Life fundraiser. Um, on the topic of that, we are continuing our Extra Life fundraiser tomorrow. We're going to be playing more Baldur's Gate 3, so I do hope to see some of you there. If you are interested in contributing to this fundraiser, you are more than welcome to, and it will be much appreciated. 
We are helping support um, local kids and families at local children's hospitals. Uh, what time approximately? Uh, it'll be 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. We're going to be loading up the game. We're going to be playing some more. Playing to uh, hashtag change kids health. It's a lot of fun. It's really good. We are we're romancing the wizard. And uh, we did have a little bit of accidental massacre yesterday. Um, a little bit of accidental massacre. I'm still trying to like weigh in my brain whether or not I want to roll back the save and try to find a different outcome. Because um, I do... I want a happy ending, okay? I want things to be good. <laughs> what, accidental massacre? How did that happen, I wonder? I don't know. You know, things just happen, you know? Like I, I may I may or may not have invited people to go march upon the grove. Thinking I you know, thinking I could handle it, you know what I mean? And I technically I handled it. There are just a lot of casualties in the process. Something maybe we can find a way to do this so that there are fewer casualties. That'd be really nice. Collateral damage, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so maybe, maybe not the ideal outcome for me personally, but we'll see. We'll see. We might, we might go back. We might do some, some slight recalculations of what we'd prefer to do, but that, I guess that just depends on whether or not I have time before stream to maybe go back in time. <laughs> Sometimes you just accidentally commit a massacre. It's Fine. Note, it was not fine. I went against Kaga in my solo run, now the grove is shut down. <laughs> Don't know what happens next. Well, I guess you have to just go somewhere else then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I am... Um, I'm definitely... I'm definitely, like, against Kaga, but I'm not going to kill her. At the very least, we'll see what our other options are. Because I want to, I want to investigate her. I want to follow that side of the storyline. I want to see what will happen if I actually uncover her secrets. Rather than just saying like, okay, let's kill all the goblins. Or let's kill her. Or her, let's just bring back Halson. You know what I mean? But it's a... It's a whole adventure. And we are having that adventure tomorrow. Currently playing in Act 3 at this moment. Yeah, I've never, um, I've never gotten out of Act 1 yet. I, I think I will theoretically soon. Maybe, potentially. Unlikely, I don't know, we haven't really done a whole lot yet. My question, how do I change followers? When I say, let's not venture together, do they leave camp or they stay in camp? They should stay in camp. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Like, you tell them, hey, let's not, let's not venture together for a little bit. Or maybe... Maybe if you do it in camp, I think, is what you need to do. But I think if you tell them to leave, they will just go back to camp. But yeah, I think I think if you're in camp and you tell them, like, hey, I, I need you to, like, stay behind for a while, I think that's, like, the proper option for swapping people out. Because um, I don't know if you can do it in, like, the overworld, you know what I mean? But I definitely did do that. Definitely did swap a couple people out in my yesterday playthrough. Where is my Discord window? All right. And yeah, if you um, I did add like a little section of my Discord server that um is in like an automated notice of like when certain people are going live. And so I've added every single person in my stream team to that like auto notification list. Um, I, I would love to add more people to that list. Um, it's just that with the, with the extension, I can only do like 25 people. So I don't know. If I have, if I have closer friends in here who are also streamers, you can let me know and I can add you to my little to my little list that the bot will just like post whenever you stream. I should really join, but I have so many servers. Like I I totally get that. 
I just joined like six bajillion different servers and like there are a couple more on my list that I actually still need to join. Um, I wish there was a quick way for me to see how many servers I'm actually in. Because that number is a lot. That number is absolutely massive. <laughs> little, little oopsie poopsie there. No, it's, it's fine. It's fine, right? Okay, so where are we? We're doing this here. Not because of the stream thing. Yes, I do stream, but for you and the L's. <laughs> well, you're always welcome to my server. It'll always be cool to have a couple more friendly faces around. We just we need more people to post Baldur's Gate memes in the Baldur's Gate chat. Let's see. But yes, the Owl Works is open to all friends. To all friends of the stream. Oh, then I can send you my tab. Hmm, <laughs> thinking face. <laughs> yeah. That is true. You can start, you just post, post fun, fun things. Let me get this window out of here. Let me get, uh, what am I looking for? My pictures folder, screenshots. Yeah, cause I, um, I remade my solo playthrough. And so, like, Katoipoi came in the chat and called me out yesterday. He's like, hi, why does your character look exactly like you? I'm like, I don't know. Sometimes I just want to be a little self-insert character kissing wizards, all right? That's just that's how I'm trying to live my life these days. Uh, I was at a local TTRPG shop recently to get some D&D books. An old friend some the employees and a customer talking about BG3. Asked them if the game had increased book sales, but they weren't sure yet. Well, I guess it'll be a fun metric to explore. I know a lot of people, a lot of people really get into the D&D whenever D&D related media comes out. Certainly don't blame them. I'm gonna post some pictures of my adventures from yesterday. For wizard smooching quest. Clackies of the keyboard. There you go. Wizard Smooch and Quest is on as of yesterday. It's a good name, Kissing Wizard. <laughs> But yeah, wizard smooch and quest. That's what we're doing. I wonder if Karlak is into females. If not, Halston has no choice. Or Shadowheart. I think everyone is into everyone. I think that's just how it works. <laughs> I think Halston in particular is into everyone. Including multiple people at once. Which is pretty cool. Your house was Polly, 100%. That one, that one I know for sure. It's just a crime that not all of them are. <laughs> you know, like, um, I think, I think the way it works is like, you can have Halston and pretty much anybody. No, I don't think it's pretty much anybody. Um, but I know you can, like, if you're going to have a polyamorous playthrough, I think Halston can fit into every single one. Um, but, uh, I think, I think Gale in particular is distinctly not polyamorous, which is heartbreaking. Um, I think Astarian is under some circumstances. I don't know. I don't know. Like I read about it at some point. I haven't actually explored it myself. But it is really cool that the characters do have some agency over, you know, what they like and what they don't. And they can just break up with you if you're being shitty to them. What? As a wizard, not Polly? What is he doing with his life? 
He's obsessing over his um ex over his ex girlfriend. <laughs> it's okay. I will replace her. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's um it's an adventure. We're here for the adventure. I'm sure I'm sure the mod makers are going to come up with a way to make everyone polyamorous. Oh, the same way they do with uh, Stardew Valley. <laughs> Just have everyone have everyone be your wife. See, I have a ping somewhere. Ba -da -ba -bum. <sighs> okay. So let's think about our goals and thoughts. I found another wizard. Talks to German. No big words English. I was sitting there with question marks over my head. Like, speak English, man. Ah, oh, so you found Urianje from Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> Just saying all kinds of all kinds of wild words. With a beard, yes. He has a No, he doesn't have a beard in Final Fantasy. I was gonna say, like, doesn't he have a beard? No, he has facial hair, but not a beard, I don't think. Oh, let me let me see what he looks like currently. Yeah, no, he's he's clean. Oh no, he has like the little he has like a little side side beard. Little silly, silly, goofy side beard. Words have meaning, but names have power. Oh, oh, oh. But no, see, he has um, he has this kind of, it's kind of little side, side beard going on. And so that's uh, we're gonna find like a proper close-up image. All these images are so small. See, there you go. Got like a little bit of well, framing, framing the mouth a little bit and then go back. It's just, there's, it's just not on the front at all. <laughs> what a silly man. I don't know if I would call that a beard, yes, but some facial hair. Yeah, there you go. He's got some facial hair. Along the jawline. So let's see. Talking about goals and thoughts. Wait. In my summer camp. Oh, that's some excellent. Yeah, that's some excellent lore for my kingdom of Arcebella. Still debating on doing reading challenge. I mean, the reading challenge is great. It's, you find a lot of really cool articles and are like people that you might not have ever read from before. Like we discovered a whole artist in the World Anvil community because we just stumbled on one of their articles, and I think that's really cool. Yeah, one of my okay. So my summer camp yielded some excellent lore for my kingdom of Arcevella, and one of my goals will be tying those things together more throughout the rest of the year. Um, and so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to think about how we're going to accomplish that. I'll just add that as like an actual article link. And there we go. It's the beginning, Ooh. the beginning of our goals and thoughts. Add some, I don't know, we're probably gonna write a lot of random stuff in here. How do I wanna do this though? Little allowed boxes. 
goal number one. Da -da -da -da, slash allowed. We're gonna stick like a couple of these in a row. Why you like a couple, a couple little boxes where I write about different goals that I have. I don't know if I like the layout quite yet, but we'll see. I like reading other people's reading challenges articles. It helps expand my circle of worlds. I see my article has X views. Would be fair to read who viewed mine. Yeah. I mean, it's always nice to like, it's nice to go read the articles of people who are reading your work. And so then you kind of like, you get to know each other through that process. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, oh, I really don't know if I like these boxes here yet. I guess we'll find out. Oh, do I need to go reopen my um, last year's reading challenge to see how I did it last year? This is why I always try to work off of like a template Well, you know, maybe I can maybe I can take my goals from last year and say, hey, did I meet this goal? Should I bring it back to focus? Should I work with this again? I think I might do something like that. So if we evaluate last year's goals, I had three goals last year. And the first goal, better organize my existing content. Which, in a sense, yes, I. it is better organized. I do have better categories. I have things kind of like figured out in that regard. And Grace Mystery, hello, Beans. Hello, Grace, how are you today? Welcome in. My second goal last year was to identify my world's secrets. Um, basically identifying what will be player knowledge, what will be game master spoilers, you know, things like that. Um, and what will be exclusive for patrons. Um, that is definitely a goal that I need to go revisit. I need to go actually figure out what my secrets are. I need to do a full overhaul of everything. Because right now, I do have, like, a system in place to add secrets to my world. I just don't really have the secrets themselves figured out so that I know what to hide. What to hide and behind what barrier. Um, but my final goal last year was to remain active in the community. And I don't know, you guys, I think I did a pretty poor job of that one, right? <laughs> definitely did not, definitely did not stay active in the community. <laughs> but no, I, I think, I think that is like the one goal that I like really stuck with, really like stuck with, stood by, and like really made it work for me. And so, yeah, remaining active in the community, I it'll be a continued goal, of course, to remain active, continue my streams, continue being a complete, like, feral menace in the Discord. And so, that's, that's gonna be my goal. <laughs> what are your goals, everybody? Like, I, I'm, I'm actually really curious, like, what are your specific goals, like, kind of coming out of this year's summer camp? Because I, I will say... I'm going to pick up the goal from last year of identifying my world's secrets, and I think I might push that into this year as well. On Calixis, I've returned from having dinner. How are you doing? I'm doing well. We're talking about our goals, our goals and our thoughts from this summer camp going into next summer camp. Um, and I'm also talking about what my goals were last year and kind of comparing and contrasting seeing which of these goals I met, which ones I may carry forward into next year because I, you know, maybe didn't meet them or they're like an ongoing goal. I have to go look to remember what I wrote. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, my, my three goals, organizing my content, identifying my world secrets, and remaining active in the community. Um, so first one, I pretty much did. Second one, I didn't do enough of. And third one, I kind of knocked that one out of the park, you know? And so that's really nice. 
and so we'll just have to see we'll have to see where that takes us. <laughs> but yeah, definitely definitely one of my goals will be well, let's see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see. Flushing out the kingdom of Arcevella. My first goal is to continue flushing out the kingdom of Arcevella, and that will be that will be this. Bum, bum, bum. We'll see what that looks like over here. So yeah, if we have if we have this goal here, I want to write more about it in our box. Let's see, my first one is what I'm currently working on, which is going through the articles I currently have and making sure everything is currently connected correctly. Uh, not just links and stuff, but details. Yes, that is a really good one. Um, one of my, I think one of my goals, like I, I have a lot of old articles, like really old articles about the lore from my world that don't fit anymore. So what I might need to do is I might need to go start deleting a bunch of old articles and just like giving them new life, like combining them into like one article, like the concepts, combining them into one article, rewriting them, writing about the details, writing about the things that like are new and make sense and are correct for my world. There's so much, so much. Yeah, goal fantasy world, have RPG published. Ooh, maybe post the beta test world ember. That's really exciting. And yeah, the details are living hell when you're not consistent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so right now I'm moving all my stuff into a board on Trello to help me with the organization. Yeah, Trello is really cool. I've used Trello before to organize some things. Um, I don't use it so much anymore, but I thought it was like really nice with like the cards and you can just kind of like move stuff around and it starts to make sense. You get to see like, you see everything moving along and it just makes you feel good as you push your tasks onto different things. It's, ah. It's fun. It's fun. I really like using like um I like using boards like that. <sighs> Let's see. My first goal. Yes, continue fleshing out the Kingdom of Arcevella. Because while we did make a lot of content for the Kingdom of Arcevella, there are a lot of details. Like I was saying, I have a lot of older articles that are not up to date. They don't quite make sense the way I'd like them to. Um, and there are a lot of details that have changed as like as my world has developed that just kind of make things not work anymore. Make things not quite right. Um, so I'd like to take the things that I wrote this year and make them, like, give them new life. Rebirth them anew make nicer, newer, fancy articles that actually get all the information in a way that I actually feel comfortable presenting it, you know? A lot of these old articles are they're kind of a mess. I made them like earlier on in my World Anvil career. I certainly don't have like the layout prowess that I've developed in my years on this platform. So we just gotta, we gotta make it fresh. We gotta make it good. And if we start with just the one region, just the one region, and build outward from there, it'll be pretty good. I think it'll be sick. It'll be fantastic. Okay, my... Let's see, my second goal. Second goal is to identify of my world. I need more free time to make CSS work my way. Yes, 100%. Uh, oh, good thing. I have the past and present most used human calendar, including festivities and holy days in Korea on paper now. Translating it next week into Korea, making it look pretty. Yes, good. 
make the things pretty. So this goal I have to carry over from last year. From last year's summer camp. Hmm. That is one I never really took the time to properly to properly address I have lots and lots of secrets in Malcora. But they're not tucked away in the appropriate in the appropriate ways throughout my articles. I'll just get rid of the breaks. There we go. So I'll, I'll just leave that as one one line there. I need to restructure my Patreon. I wonder if I might jump ship to coffee. How's that settled? I'm gonna be able to better identify how my information is separated. Cool. So there's there's our second goal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I think we'll be able to fill this space with these goals if we just keep writing them this way. Ooh, Dazzle Cat rating with the party of two. Hello, welcome, welcome in. How are we doing? What were we up to today? How is the stream? Shout out for Daz. Talking about, talking about World Anvil Anvilites. There's another cool Anvilite for everyone to go check out and follow 100%. Yeah, you tell me, you tell me what we were working on today. How is the summer camping? How is the reading challenge? How is everything that you are up to? And if you're doing neither of those things, and <laughs> otherwise, how are you? Dazzling Raid. Hello, welcome. Happy to see you. We're working on our reading challenge right now. We're just wrapping up. Well, not wrapping up. I'm kind of like in the middle of writing about my goals. Because the goals section is like, I need, to, I need to figure it out still. No, we'll see. You've actually, you've arrived towards like, towards the end of my stream. But, but we are not quite done yet. Not quite. So we still need to, we still need to figure out what our actually goals are. All right, so continue fleshing out the King of Arcevella. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Identify the secrets of my world. And what is goal number three for this year? Mm hmm. I know I have more goals. More, more goals. Ah, yes, okay. So, my third goal. My third goal is to... <laughs> oh, hold on. My third goal is to develop Alcora's Pantheons. There we go. Developing my Pantheons, very important, is something I should have been working on ages ago, actually. Um, 
I need to start working on who the gods actually are. Who they are, what they do. And in this place I can bring Coria Tales ready, so I can move to write the next Tales of Coria, maybe start the novel around World Ember. That's really exciting, that's really cool. I would love to get my world to a place where I have um, like a tangible, a tangible thing that I'm making with it. But I don't actually know what that would be, even once I get to that point, you know what I mean? Like, do I want to write a novel? Do I want to make comics? Do I... Do I want to make a game? I don't know. Like, I really don't know. I feel like this would be a really interesting world for, like, four narratives. Um, because things... Putting it into a format where things can change and can and do change pretty rapidly. I don't know, do all of the things? I I could do all of the things, that is true. And I may have a lot of fun doing all of those things. Cause like, I don't know. Cause like part of me wanting to make like a proper art style for Malkora, um, like specifically, uh, kind of like how I was talking about it earlier when we were looking at that, um, that user's art. Um, I, I would love to find a, a simplified art style that works for my world and that I can just regularly draw with. And I would love to make like a lot of short form content, make comics, decorate my articles, like all this kind of stuff. And that would make me really happy. I would love to do that. You see, Dara, we need to carve out the time. The reason I write my own RPG is other games almost always have things that annoy me. Grew rather tired of endless house ruling. That's fair. That's fair. Games, you know, other people are writing the games that you are playing, so it's always going to have different rules and mechanics that maybe you don't agree with, maybe you don't like. And of course, as you say, that is why we have all these house rules, while we're always changing things up. Let's see, my third goal is to develop Mulcora's Pantheons. Hmm. Another long running. Another long running goal that keeps evading me. It's avoid it keeps evading me somehow. Despite my feverish drive to actually address the subject. The clicky clacks. Hmm. Just like how America runs on Duncan. Alcora runs on Faith. I need to finally sit down, just get that work done. Who are the gods of this plane? How they get here? What impact do they have on the people? So many questions I need to answer. I will go back up and address goal number one. First goal to continue fleshing out the kingdom of Arsavella. Hold on. I'll actually move this in here because it makes more sense that that would be in there. My summer camp yielded some excellent lore for my kingdom of Arsavella, and one of my goals would be trying be tying those things together more throughout the rest of the year. Um With my goal of making Arcevella Alcora's effective starting zone, I'm going to set up a collection of articles. Introduce the region. Um, more 
comprehensive way so there we go so there are our three goals very cool and of course I'm gonna add like a couple like maybe a blurb up here and a couple not a couple things down here yes we're coming up with three goals oh, do they make a wrong turn that may be a fun thing for students to make a drawing of <laughs> they may be but yes we have we have our three main goals that we are taking out of summer camp and so continue fleshing out the kingdom of arcevella we say, my summer camp yielded some excellent lore from the Kingdom of Arcevella, and one of my goals be tying these things together more throughout the rest of the year. With my goal of making Arcevella Malcora's effective starting zone, I'd like to set up a collection of articles that introduce the region in a more comprehensive way. And so that is goal number one. I would like to make a world primer um, from the perspective of the Kingdom of Arcevella. So the world as a whole is kind of a mystery to the people who live there. And I figure that's a good way to kind of introduce brand new people to this world. Like you are one of these people who don't really know much about the rest of the world and what goes on there. Because the kingdom of Arcevella is kind of like an anomaly in that it's not really affected by a lot of the same powers that the rest of the world is. It's not being overturned by magic. Its environment is not drastically changing all of the time. It's pretty static. It's pretty static. It's been that way for a very long time. So anybody who lives there isn't going to know what it's like elsewhere. So it's a good way to introduce you to a weird, wacky, wild magic place of putting you into a not quite weird, wacky, wild magic place. But at least people know, like, magic is a thing, probably. Like, some places might not know that. Some places will. Some places know it quite a bit. It also depends on who you are and where you're actually from. But no, goal number two, identify the secrets of my world. That is, a, that is an important one. I do have a Patreon and I do have tiers that say like, you get this many secrets and you get like these different things. But I am in desperate need of like a, a rework of that entire system. Uh. And yeah, so figuring out that entire system, I need to restructure my Patreon. Um, Wondering if I might jump ship to Kofi, who knows. There we go. This goal is a carryover from last year's summer camp, as it's one I never really took time to properly address. I have lots and lots of secrets in Melkora, but they're not tucked away in the appropriate ways throughout my articles. I need to restructure my Patreon and wonder if I might jump ship to Kofi. Once that's settled, I may be able to better identify how my information will be separated. And so that is, that is the goal. Hey, friend is here. We start with our run. Have fun. Thanks for stream. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Enjoy your run. Also, Conquest Publishing. We had fun sponsoring Summer Camp. We will be, will be more fun drawing the winners. Heck yes. It'll be so much fun. I'm, I, oh man, I, I'm like weirdly nervous about like Summer Camp and like all the awards and things. Like part of me is like, I I want to win something. But then I'm like, oh, I know I also didn't put in like a crazy amount of time into my articles. So I don't think I'm gonna win anything unless it's to a raffle. Um, but a raffle is really cool. I don't know, just, I want the clout, you know? I, I wanna I wanna be able to say like, oh, my mine was the favorite of a prompt, you know? <laughs> but uh, who knows? We, we'll try. We'll try for that next year for sure. I know this year I was like, I went into the event like, yeah, we're gonna make some awesome fleshed out articles. We're gonna like really, we're gonna compete for these uh, for these wins. And at the end of it, I was like, we're just getting the diamond badge <laughs> and calling it a day. Um, that's okay though. I, I find it more important that I get the diamond badge than I do like a win. You know what I mean? But we'll see, we'll see. I remember the kids voting a lot on your entry. What? Who's who's voting on my entry? Wait, what entry? Who's voting? Hmm? 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm not like super. I'm not super hype about a lot of my summer camp entries. Uh, the prompt you entered for us. Oh, I see. Oh boy. I'll take a sip in anticipation. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We got a... So our reading challenge is shaping up quite nicely then. Yes, confronting the mountain of articles that have been sitting in my reading list. There's so many. There's so many articles in my reading list. It's mostly, mostly for these. <laughs> mostly, mostly the historical figure. I had to read all of them. All of them, every single last one. Oh, I wish I wish I had the time to give more more of my time and more of my attentions to like every single person that was on my reading list. I feel like I've said that like six different times already, like even just in this one stream. Like I want I want everyone. I want to share everyone. I want to comment on everyone. But alas, it cannot be. It simply cannot be. But all right, let's Let's see, what do we got? I'm thinking, I'm thinking we might start wrapping up our little stream here, our little adventure. We're gonna, we're gonna see if there's someone around that we can just start. We can go jump into someone else's channel. We can do a little raid. I see I see one of my one of my fellow creatures is currently live and that's pretty cool. It's pretty exciting. What do you say we go visit Cassini and Blossom? One of my fellow creature feature members. I'm just waiting for this ad to finish so I can be properly in the chat when it happens. Here we go. Let's see. Yes, we are going to go raid Cassini and Blossom. One of my fellow Creature Feature members, working on some art commissions. A wonderful, wonderful VTuber friend. And so let's uh, let's just do that, shall we? I will pull up my little, I'll pull up my little screen here, tell you what's what. Tomorrow we are going to be streaming more Baldur's Gate 3. It is going to be 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we're going to be continuing our Extra Life fundraising goal our goal is 100 by the end of the weekend. It is tabletop weekend, and so, you know, I'm playing my virtual D&D, &D, of course, as one does. Um, if you would like to contribute, we are fundraising for Upstate Golisano Children's Hospital. All of the money that is raised goes directly to them and to the families of the children that are affected by any number of conditions. It helps support treatment, it helps support families. And so it's just a wonderful cause that we get to support by doing our favorite thing, which is playing video games and having a jolly good time. Um, if you give $5 or more, you'll be entered into a, a raffle for custom emote, and I will draw that for you. If you see the emotes in my chat, I made those all myself, so if you would like them for yourself, well, here's your chance to enter. It's a $25 value for one emote, so hey, it's pretty good. <laughs> So yes, I will see you all tomorrow. Please enjoy the rest of your days. Have a wonderful, wonderful time. I'm going to start this raid. Everyone, once you enter this channel, of course, my raid shout is bird raid. So just any variation, any variation of the following will do. <laughs> so yes, have a blessed night. You as well. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Everyone, grab your sippies. Go, world build. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Farewell, farewell. Much love.